Sometimes you finish up a quest in a big game and you just think, wow, that was good. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 genius quests in video games. Starting off at number 10, it's Carnal Sins from The Witcher 3. You can pretty much never go wrong with an investigation side quest in an RPG, especially one of the best RPGs out there, and this, Carnal Sins, is one of the best investigation quests out there as well. What's interesting about this one is how it kind of comes out of nowhere. The quest that you have to do to even start this one, Cabaret, is mostly a lighthearted mission that sees you help Geralt's friend Dandelion earn a loan for the cabaret he wants to open. I mean, there's a fake fight and everything, but it's nothing serious. But once that's done and you return to talk to Dandelion again, a messenger will approach you and say that another character named Priscilla has been attacked. She's a prominent character during the Novigrad section of the game, so the fact that she gets seriously injured in a side quest is kind of shocking. It's one of the cool things about the game too it's really not afraid to have important events play out during side quests what happens is a pretty in-depth investigation where Geralt tries to uncover the identity of the person who attacked her there's more crime scenes to investigate suspects to question it's all pretty involved and it's up to you to pay attention to clues if you want to solve it because it's absolutely possible to make the wrong choice and accuse the wrong person to make matters worse the game does not even tell you if you made the wrong choice right away it tells takes a while before it becomes clear that the actual killer is still at large. So, it's important that you did make the right choice. It's just an excellent murder mystery that forces you to actually think about what you're doing. The fact it also involves an important side character immediately makes it feel more important too. Definitely higher stakes. Uh, it's just an all-around great game, and it's littered with great quests in it. This among the best. At number 9, Oblivion's A Brush With Death. For a game that so many people decry as being repetitive, Oblivion still has some of the best quests in the entire Elder Scrolls series. Case in point, A Brush With Death, aka the one where you go into the painting. Your job here is very simple. The famous painter has seemingly disappeared, so his family tasked you with finding him. It sounds like the start of a pretty normal mystery, uh, but things get strange when you check out his studio. When you investigate the painting, you suddenly get sucked inside. The world's more vibrant, everything has this weird painted effect, and it's unique specifically to this place. You see it nowhere else in the game. Inside, you can find the painter who reveals they've got a magic paintbrush they can use to create words inside their paintings. The problem is that a thief stuck inside, stole the brush, and created some painted trolls to protect himself. So that didn't work out, because he's dead. Completing the mission is as simple as retrieving the brush from the thief's dead body. So the quest itself is pretty straightforward, but the work they put into creating this place is really really great. For a one-off area, there are just a ton of fun details here, like how the painter gives you turpentine to help fight the painted trolls because turpentine is a paint remover. It's just an all-around surprising and fun quest. But people like to rag on Oblivion at times, but it really does have some cool stuff in it. At number eight, Beyond the Beef from Fallout New Vegas. You know, the one with the cannibals. Like a lot of the big side quests in Fallout New Vegas are really great, but for us at least, this one stands out as a particularly macabre and interesting quest. You can give your companion up to be eaten by cannibals, so it can go really dark if you wanted to. The whole thing starts uh, in a few ways, but for me, it's when I talk to this guy named Hat Gunderson, who asks you for some help tracking down his son. Now the man's son is disappeared at the Ultralux Casino on the Vegas Strip, which is run by these creeps called the White Glove Society. Now, what makes this quest so good is that there's just a ton of ways you could potentially resolve it. You can ally yourself with this guy Mortimer, who wants the White Gloves to become cannibals again. You can kill the son and frame the father for the murder. You can create a human flesh substitute to fool the White Glove people and free the son. Or you can team up with an investigator who will help you rescue the son. There's just so many ways for the mission to play out that it's really great and it helps that it all takes place in a casino, which gives it a really unique atmosphere. I mean, it's a dump compared to a real casino because it's a post-apocalyptic casino, but it's interesting. Because it's so complex, the whole quest does also have its fair share of bugs. Still, it's really ambitious, interesting, and kind of creepy as well. 
And number seven is saving Solaire from Dark Souls. Everybody knows about this guy, the Knight Solaire, you know, the praise the sun guy. He's all about jolly cooperation and is all around a decent, if a little strange dude. Compared to most of the creeps you have to deal with in these games, he's one of the most genuinely supportive and eh, vaguely nice. So he got really popular with the Dark Souls fan base. And because nothing good can ever happen in the world of these games, for most people, the last time you see him, he's being infected by a gross insect called the sunlight maggot which drives him insane or or something either way when he's got this thing on him he attacks you and the only way to free him is to kill him it's one of the darkest fates of any character in these games but there is a way to avoid it there's no way someone would be able to figure it out on their own but the fact that it is possible is awesome so what you have to do is join the daughters of chaos convent first give the fair lady 30 humanity which will open the big door beside her and offer you an alternate route forward now there's a bunch of these sunlight maggots in them, so kill all of them. If you do it before you ever set foot in the Lost Isolith, then you'll save Solaire. Of course, because happy endings are rare in this series, even if you manage to save him from a horrible fate, he is still depressed. And he's actually happy in a twisted way if he's got the sunlight maggot on him. He finally found his very own son, whereas if you save him, he ponders if it was all alive. But, I mean, with him alive, he at least has the possibility to find something in his life, presumably, if one assumes that that the lore continues beyond the story of the game. Kind of hard to do that if you're dead or possessed. The quests in Dark Souls can be incredibly obscure, but they can be very interesting as well. And you sometimes do things that don't even seem possible at first. And number six, shoot this guy in the face from Borderlands 2. Who can forget one of the most idiotic and elemental quests of all time? Borderlands games are filled with dumbass quests that are chocked to the brim with pop culture references or meta commentary, but this particular one isn't one of them. It is as basic as it gets. While exploring the Thousand Cuts area, you come across a non-hostile bandit who gives you a simple request. Face McShooty wants you to shoot him in the face. Shoot him in the arms, legs, or chest. It's not good enough. You gotta shoot him in in the face. The objective, shoot face McShooty in his face, is a very clear one, if not a little grammatically confusing. The strategy, aim at his face and fire your gun. The completion message, you shot him in the face. It's so incredibly simple and dumb that it's kind of brilliant. Its side quests boil down to the most basic parts possible, and it's hilarious and totally bizarre. And number five is Welcome to the Machine from World of Warcraft Cataclysm. So this one's pretty interesting. In this quest, you actually become a quest-giving NPC. You stand there, you are approached by heroes, everything from the standard low-level player that just types in all caps, to the hardcore PvP player, to the epic, tricked-out legendary raider that couldn't care less about the quest you're giving and threatens to post on the forums about their displeasure with the quest. It is such a funny way to look at how these NPCs must view the players in the game. We don't use usually cover World of Warcraft games around here, but this particular quest stands out so much we have to mention it. Actually, from looking around, World of Warcraft actually has a lot of creative quests in it. It's come a long way from the collect 10 bear asses days, I guess. In the Hillsbred foothills, this mission pops up you're playing as a horde, and it's fairly low level. All you have to do is talk to this high executor guy who gives you your orders, distribute orders to anyone coming along looking for work. That's it. You just stand there and hand out quests to NPCs. It's unique, and it's pretty funny, especially given the developers are essentially making fun of their own quest design format. And number four is a night to remember in Skyrim, an aptly named quest. This is actually probably one of the most unique ones in the entire game. How it all starts is simple. Once you're a level 14 player, a guy will start appearing in random taverns around Skyrim who will challenge you to a drinking contest. If you take him up on that, that's when things get interesting. After three drinks, your guy passes out. And from there, the quest involves retracing your steps and piecing together what happened. You know, it's 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 basically the hangover. The movie series it's that in Skyrim the investigation itself is fairly straightforward but the way the quest is introduced and what you end up doing in it is unique and really fun it's almost entirely a comedy and many of your responses reflect that you have to retrieve a goat you almost got married there is a lot going on at the end, you find out the whole thing was orchestrated by a Daedric Prince, which makes sense. Most of the best quests in Skyrim involve the Daedric Princes in one way or another, and this is definitely one of the most fun. 
And number three is Cinema Verite from Silent Hill Downpour. For a game that's not looked upon particularly fondly these days, there's one part of it that everyone agrees is really good. The side quests. They're well made, they're thoughtful, and they are actually interesting. In a lot of ways, they're more interesting than the main story of the game. And this side quest, which takes place in an old movie theater, is one of the most creative quests we have ever heard of, period. If you manage to find enough items around town, you can actually repair the projector in the movie theater. From there, there's a puzzle to solve which involves rearranging some piece of film. What makes this all interesting though is that you can actually stand in the spot where the film is projected and enter the movie, which you can explore and find clues about the correct order the film is supposed to be arranged. It is creepy and mysterious in the correct ways, while at the same time being a fairly in-depth puzzle which is totally optional. The style of this whole thing is cool, uh, but it's surprising that this whole sequence is optional because it's honestly better than the vast majority of the rest of the game. At number two is Reuniting Cafe and Anju from Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Another famous one, this is one of the biggest side quests in the whole game, which involves you reuniting a soon-to-be-married couple. What makes it so memorable is how complex it is. There's multiple steps that if done wrong, or if you're not in the right place at the right time, can lead to failure. It's not a short job either, it takes all three days to complete, and the ending plays out only minutes before the moon comes crashing down and destroys the world. But if it was just complicated, it probably wouldn't be as well liked as it is. One of the biggest reasons people love Majora's Mask is because side quests like this. Tragic little narratives that play out before the end of the world. It feels like a huge deal when you manage to help out some of these people. And this quest is one of the most in-depth in the game. It's not something you have to do, but it feels like you're missing out if you don't at least give it a shot. It's pretty tough, and there are a lot of places where you can screw it up, but it's so great when you actually manage to reunite them. And number one is Who Done It from Oblivion. I, we can't not mention this one. Who Done It is just an all-around fantastic quest. It's basically a reverse murder mystery. Instead of playing as the detective trying to uncover the murderer, you're the murderer trying to kill all the guests without being suspected. It is a brilliant premise that they do a fantastic job in the playing out. This quest becomes available as part of the Dark Brotherhood and tasks you with clearing out a house filled with the Brotherhood's enemies. Now you're free to just go in and slaughter everyone, but if you want to get the bonus reward, you gotta do it without anyone witnessing anything. To do it, you have to talk to all of the guests, and there's some way to get all of them isolated, and when they are, that is when you strike. It's just an all-around great premise that's a lot of fun to see play out. If you're able to get away with killing all but two guests without getting caught, you can even get the final two to kill each other. It's an all-around clever mission, and it has a great hook. That's all for today, though. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a subscription so click subscribe and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks